Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today we're gonna go on a little bit of a field trip. You know, we love building model kits, styrene kits, and one of the things we like doing is enhancing those kits with some aftermarket components. Now, there is a veteran model maker who's worked in the FX business for a long time, a few miles from here, his name is Randy Newbert. He runs Voodoo FX, and he designs lighting kits for hobby kits, garage kits, and some of the things we've bought and built in the past. Most recently, Randy actually also contributed to the restoration of the USS Enterprise model that's on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Let's over, head over to his garage and check out some of his projects. Hey Randy, good to see you. Hi Norm, how's it going? Going great. Wow, thanks for welcoming us into your garage. This hey. is a, it's a really cool space you have here. Good, great to have you. Yeah, this is it's like a very familiar space to me. Working in a garage, building model kits, but of course, you have many, many more years on me of building model kits. How long have you I, been doing this? I started in 2000. Uh, I was a model builder for many years before that, but I really established Voodoo Effects right around 2000 and introduced it into the web and got it established at that point. So you've been making models your whole life though, before that? I have, I've been building since I was, you know, probably my first models I built was around eight to nine years old. Um, and then uh, I have never stopped since then, so. And you've seen that business really change. I have seen the business change over the years. It's been a very progressive pattern. Uh, I've seen the market kind of sweep, sweep up and down a little bit, but yeah, it's been a lot of, it's been a, quite a fun experience. It's, it's always fun to me to visit a model maker's home and garage because I can tell the things that mean a lot to you, oh, right? Yeah. Can, can you walk us through some of these model kits? Like what do you have on the, the walls here or, or even this guy here? Sure. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a scratch built model. Uh, this is for a independent movie project that I'm developing. Um, we put this together, uh, about two years ago um, and this was just built up through a concept design element and then uh, we're bringing it up and we're actually going to use it as a physical model. We're going to actually going to shoot this model. So you're thinking of making these models with the filmmaker's m intent like to put on camera? Absolutely. It has multiple access points so we can hold it in different positions. That way we can really get a good look at it and then when it's doing a flyby or something we can get a really good physical effect from it. Yeah, and a lot of times when we pick up garage kits or even model kits off the shelf, they're made for display, but the display is not exactly how we want to have in mind. I love that, for example, you have things hung up and you've created right. your own displays and your own stands for a lot of these things. Right. A lot of times when these models, they come, sometimes they don't come with a very good stand with them. So a lot of times we do have to build something to actually hold them and support them. Oh. Um, and there's, there's a lot of variety in the way that you want to actually mount the models up. And sometimes they don't come with much of anything except for decals and the styrene. And that's where right. what you do, Voodoo FX, comes in in terms of the aftermarket lighting. Yes, that's it. That's what we, we do all the little accessory electronics for them. Uh, we do all sorts of lighting effects, mm -hmm. uh, other sound effects. There's other uh, different things that are you know, brought into the miniatures. But mainly, we you know, are doing mainly the lighting features. And, and a wall of electronics, just kit parts that you have. Right. You're doing a lot of soldering yourself. Right, right. A lot of the things are soldered together. Um, some of it just comes from, uh, you know, these, as I could show you, like a small example of like some parts. Um, these are some of the circuit boards that we've actually developed and designed ourselves. Um, these are uh, integrated circuits. And they can do all sorts of different features and functions uh, depending on the programming. So these are very universal um, application set up to do multiple effects just on one circuit. So whether it's blinking lights, randomized lights, very specific colors, you can take a board and adapt it for the model kit in, in mind. Correct. And this, this one like this one has three separate individual channels. So we can have three features going on all at the same time. So really kind of a unique style board. Oh, wow. um, kind of old style, um, not really like your more of your integrated 
um, electronics these days, but uh, very solid and mm -hmm. uh, good workhorse. Yeah, no, the workhorse so. is what you need because right. like, we want these displayed on our shelves and we want right. to flip the switch and leave it lit for 24 seven. Definitely want the reliability. Oh, and awesome. that's what, you know, we specialize in making these very reliable systems. Uh, we've, we've actually purchased and used some of your kits before, but it's a privilege for us to come here and see some of your works. Can we take a look at some of these models yeah. that you developed lighting for? Yeah, absolutely, sure. Where do you want to start? I know you have just a handful here, but you develop lighting kits for how many model kits do you think? Oh boy, there's hundreds of them out there uh, that we've developed over the years. Um, these are just a small handful of ones that I've actually been able to uh, keep. Uh, most of the time the models, when they're actually finished and completed, they're usually sent back to the model manufacturers, so then that way they can bring them to the shows and mm. go and show them out in the general public. Um, it's a great way for them to get the product out there and for them to showcase the piece. That's interesting. So you work directly with some of these manufacturers. I do. I do. Like they don't necessarily want to develop the electronics kit themselves. That's not their business. Right. And they work with you to make their models look the best that they can. Like they don't sell the paint either, but that all these parts are needed to make this look awesome. Absolutely. And that's the whole idea is, you know, since we develop them, um, we're just making it as an enhancement, enhancement to the model themselves uh, to make it more like a studio miniature. So uh, what like, do you got here? Well, this is the Proteus. Um, this is a model that was brought out by Mobius Model some years back. Um, we did a full lighting package on this one. Um, I've got them all on battery operated setups right now, but this is full interior. Uh, we had to do a custom ring light for the uh, the top of the dome there and uh, basically get it all to uh, fit inside the model. That's um, like the big, really important part, fitting. Because the fitting, yes. when they design the styrene kits here, there are no mounting points for your lights. Right, right. A lot of times I'm lucky that uh, over the years, the model manufacturers have been very good about making better areas to get the lighting into them. Mm. So they're allowing more and more people want to get involved in electronics. They make, a, uh, they make them so they're easier to get inside and get around those places that need to be lit. And you want to design it in a way where someone can take a kit you've made and not necessarily need to make a ton of physical modifications. Right, and that's the basis on it. Um, one of the things that I do every time when I'm developing a, a new lighting system for a model, we basically go through uh, not making too many modifications to the general model itself. I always try to work with the model as a stock out of the box model. Mm. Um, that way uh, they don't have to make a lot of modifications just to make them look like a studio miniature. Yeah. And I, I notice even here from, from this kit to the, like the moon bus here, different right. scales. Yeah, different right? scales. Uh, and so do you take that in consideration because like lighting here is awesome. I see like shadows from the ladder here. So you, where you put the lights, exterior lights, but also how it lights up interior as well? Oh, absolutely. And just, that was a very good point you made that is a lot of times setting the accent lighting in there is very crucial uh, to creating the right effect. Mm. Um, otherwise it just looks just like just a light thrown inside there. Yeah, yeah. So we take a lot of time really, really looking to where we can get the right bounce light and where we can get the right effect. So, it is, so it's not a scale problem. So you wanna make it look scalable. Yeah, can we, can we yeah. light this one yeah, up as sure. well? Sure. Hey, here's the Moon Bus. This is another Mobius model that came out some uh, oh. some years back. This is a re-release. Um, beautiful model. Um, yeah. Very, very nice, high quality model itself. Oh, I love um, the red and blue. And yep. like you said, like the interior lighting, the way it kind right. of oozes out of it. And we had to do some research and some, it's, it took us a while to find this special ice blue style lighting. And uh, once I found it, I was like very, I was very happy with the effect because a lot of times, uh, mainly the guys usually will just put them just a straight blue, but this has more of a very uh, baby blue, kind of a cool yeah. blue look to it. So yeah, so this is another one, uh, a very easy to install kit, um, can be run off batteries uh, or uh, AC wall adapter. And you're using LED strips for These here. Are, this one is definitely done on a strip kit. This is a strictly a strip kit. Mm. Um, again, uh, it will run off nine volts uh, with no problem. But for long term, it's usually better to go with an AC wall adapter because right. these the, the strip light tends to draw a lot of power. Yeah. So. Yeah. I see two from Terminator. These are uh, Pegasus Hobbies, I believe. Yeah, I wanted to bring these out too since there was the collaboration between Mobius and Pegasus Hobbies. Yep. And I wanted to also show a few of the, uh, the Pegasus kits. 
Um, also, super high quality craftsmanship. I mean, these are really, really knockout, standout models. Um, this was a little trickier one to fit up. Uh, this one took some time. I'm trying uh, to see where you wired through, ah, in the bath, okay. Right. You're hiding that wire, yep. Right, I tried to hide it in the stand a little bit. The, the stand itself is a little bit flimsy, just the stock one. But again, I kind of worked off the general parameters of what the model came with. And this was the stock base, so I, I wanted to kind of incorporate that all in the model without modifying it too much. I mean, that's the magic of model making, right? You're Absolutely. Styrene is flimsy, styrene is light. <laughs> Absolutely. But with the paint job, with the lighting, it looks metal, it looks heavy. That's and, it. And, and that's the magic of it. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and then this, yeah, this, and this is a nice, this is a really good, uh, Fun project to do, uh, pretty easy model to build too as well. Beautiful, Hunter Killer. And then over yeah, to this? Yeah, this is the companion model that goes also with this too. This is the one we developed some years back. Again, this is all fully self-contained. And actually the mounts all move and moves around with it. Um, and this was another uh, great project uh, that Pegasus brought together with these two uh, together. I love uh, that here it's supposed to be a spotlight, so you really right. have to make it look real bright, the way it bounces off the top of it, you know, as it would appear in the film. Right, and then we went really dull mm. on the tops of these. These are really choked off with uh, heavier resistor values, so we didn't get a really hot, bright light through the top because we wanted them to look more, again, scalable. And then behind, saving this one for last, a kit that I'm working on myself. <laughs> I didn't realize you had done the lighting kit from Mobius. Yes, I this, this one... Um, the Discovery was a, a, a project that I got kind of late in the game. And then basically what this one came in as, uh, like usual, with a test shot. This was actually a test shot, so I didn't have the decals. Um, a lot of times when I get the test shots, they don't come with a lot of the accessories or hardware. So I have to kind of just ad lib um, wherever I need to to kind of get it close to the way that they're going to actually going to produce it. So this kit was a really cool kit. Um, this one has a full engine feature on here, and I'll just I'll turn this one on as well. And again, I got these all in little battery, little configurations. But this one has full engine lights, mm -hmm. um, and it has the front uh, actual the module on the top of the is lit, um, both the upper and also inside the cab. Um, and this one comes with a little accessory EVA pod. Uh, that we uh, that another one of my uh, uh, another guy that I work with sells as a little accessory kit for this that goes along with it too. So for the discovery, this is an example of a kit where multiple people, you and other collaborators, are working on aftermarket enhancements. Exactly. Ah, yeah, right. So, so that would be three D printed pieces that replace the stock pieces. Sometimes I've seen like photo etch pieces that you can buy aftermarket, right? Enhanced and. And, and give it more detail, yeah, more and surface they, detail. And they do. And, you know, again, this was a, 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 another great uh, setup from um, the combination of Pegasus and Mobius together, uh, releasing both the Discovery and the soon-to-come EVA pod and all these other projects that they did together. Um, it's great to see that they're bringing out this, uh, this great material. Well, these are finished models, and I see a lot of unfinished stuff just around, uh -huh. the, around the shop here. Can we take a look at... Kits sure. that are out of the box that, that you're still working on developing the kits for? Sure, absolutely. All right, Randy, what do we got here? Okay, so these are some projects that I just finished up. These are This is actually a current project that I'm working on right now. Um, I can go over a few details. This was one that just came in just recently. This is the USS Calvin. Uh, this is also a Mobius and Pegasus Hobbies combo model um, that's about ready to hit the market uh, any time now. Um, and again, uh, this was a, a, a kind of a last minute project that came in and I'm going to just turn it on for you so you guys can kind of get a kind of a little bit of a look on it. But this is another one where we developed the lighting and um, basically I haven't finished writing instructions for it yet, but we're getting this one ready right now to uh, be released. Mm, mm. So this is a new uh, uh, and I, I don't I don't know if this kit has hit the market yet, but I think it's very close to coming out um, anytime now. Now, when you take a look at this kit, like your tried and true tools, you, you know, LED strips, mm -hmm. individual diodes. Do you also work in uh, fiber optics or lamps that can diffuse across um, other spaces? Like, how do, you, how do you approach the thinking of how you want the lighting to work? Uh, an another great, awesome question. And yeah, they, we use multiple applications um, everywhere from fiber optics. Uh, we can do uh, very custom side lighting. Um, sometimes it's strip, 
um, like you said, individual diodes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we use bounce techniques too. There's a lot of uh, bouncing of the light. Sometimes mm. we have a zone where we can't get in too well. So we might use a bounce technique to get off to that area. And a lot of times those are explained in the instructions if the guys will read the instructions right. now. This, this doesn't always happen, but <laughs> I do take the time to write them out and still go through the instruction. That's a huge form. part of developing it is. a kit. It, and they can guiding always, people. And they can always call me too. If, if I'm very accessible, if they do need help with these projects, they can always give me a buzz if they're stuck, they have a problem. I'd rather not see them go through the entire build process and then you know fail with the electronics. So I want them to really work their way through it a little bit at a time. You know, and that's something, I gotta be honest, it's how we found you because we were working with one of the kits right. and we had a problem and we called you and you picked up the phone and I was like, who does that these days? Who actually <laughs> I know. provides customer support? It's so unbelievable that actually, we, we are very rare in that area because you're, you're right, people don't usually spend the time to either email or get back or anything, but I feel the, the connection between the client and you know our company is very important to us, so we need to be there to walk them through it. Mm. And then know? the C view here, this is yeah, the, the C view painted this, off the shelf. You just bought this to design a kit for. Yeah, the C view actually, this was asked for me some quite some years ago. Uh, we originally developed the original C views for Mobius, um, mm. both the eight window and the TV four window versions. Um, I don't have those models here right now because they are actually down at Mobius models, mm -hmm. but. These, uh, this little kit was asked to me some years back uh, from Colt TV Man uh, to develop something for it. And just out of the blue recently, I got the model kit given to me um, from one of our model club meetings. And so I felt it was the best opportunity to go ahead and yeah. relaunch it. So I actually ended up getting this one and the eight window version too. So I've got, now I'm, I'm going to work on this. But yeah, see, we've, we just started developing this. We just painted the base, but um, I went ahead and we started trying to get the glass frosted out, um, deciding where the light's going to go inside here. There's another little belly piece that goes on the top here. And I just have to work out the details on how it's going to light. This is only going to have the one central light and just the window light only. Um, it, it was too hard to get into the tail lights. They're just too small. Mm. So I could have done them with a piece of fiber, but most guys aren't comfortable running fiber optics. And at this scale, it'd be very hard to even get it to even drill through the model without probably ruining the fin. Yeah. So I just decided just to go for the, you know, just get the bulk surface of it lit. But this is a basically, this is a stock, this is a stock model right out of the box. And um, I'm going to be providing a nice little lighting package for it. Nice. So, I, I know you have to design with all levels of expertise in mind. Someone who it might be their first or second model or someone who's right. built models for, for 10, 20 years. Do you ever want to just go all out and build the most complex lighting <laughs> system or just for yourself? I always do. And the, you're right. That is a very uh, tricky guideline that I have to follow by is, A, I have to make it, you know, still look as good as it can look. Yeah. But it also has to be something that these guys can do. Yeah. So if it's a beginner, an amateur, intermediate builder, maybe even an advanced builder, they can all it all fits in the same category. Yes, would I like to really go to town on some of these ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really do want to go to town on some of them, but it's sometimes over some most of the skill sets. Right. So I have to just keep it kind of toned down a little bit and just keep that for uh for you know for the general public. This yeah. these are but again, we still go through making it look accurate and, you know, so it's going to look really good for display. And you also do commissions as well. So maybe that's the opportunity for you to really go all out. It's when you're making a model for someone end to end like this Falcon here. That's absolutely right. The Falcon is, uh, I'm working on actually two of these Falcons. These are Hasbro Falcons. Um, these have been highly modified and converted. Um, all the detail parts have all been changed on the outside. Mm. Um, and these are slow and long processes because there's there's a lot involved in them. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is another side of our business that we do a lot of is that we do a lot of commissioned uh, projects like this and we build a lot for others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, guys don't have as much time nowadays but they're still collectors. They still are really into the uh, into the models and miniatures, and they want them for their displays. So, yeah. so we build for others. So that's yeah, uh, eighty percent of our business is done on commissioned uh, build jobs. Oh, awesome! Wow. So, yeah, it's wow. a really really uh, and these Falcons are exceptionally uh, uh, long projects, but uh, they're very rewarding when they're done.
Well, I'm glad so. that there are still enough, you know, patrons and hobbyists oh, yeah. out there to keep this business going because it really feels like, you know, model making over the past couple of decades, it was this big business. Now it feels like a, a community, right? From the it, people making the models to the aftermarket enhancements to the, the builders. It, it is such a, it actually is a very small community, but we all know each other. It's very tight. Um, and it's great because then we can all collaborate and we all get together. And, you know, since it's a small uh, operation like that, everybody can, you know, if they've got a problem, we can help them work them through it. And it's just a, it's a great way to get out there in the general modeling community. Awesome. Well, keep on doing what you're doing because we love your, your kits and we love putting these models together. And Randy. Well, well, thank you. I really appreciate you guys coming over and taking the time to check out my stuff. Yes. Great to see you. Great to see you too.